Hey everybody, welcome back. So we're continuing to test the new M1 chips, the MacBook Air with the M1 processor. That's this one right here. And compared to the MacBook Pro with the Core i9 Intel chip, so far the MacBook Air has been winning, except building a .NET application, a very simple console application, where it lost just slightly to the MacBook Pro with the Intel chip. But a lot of you have been asking me to do a more realistic test of what a developer actually does throughout the day. So a JavaScript developer or a TypeScript developer will have a project running as they're developing it, it'll keep watching the file system and keep rebuilding the TypeScript. So I wanted to simulate that and I wanted to do it for an extended period of time. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I've set up a very simple test project. Here's the package.json. We'll get into that in a second. It's a TypeScript project, very, very simple one with one file called index.ts. Let's have a look at what this does. By the way, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead, consider subscribing where we do things like this, developer focused content. Right now we're reviewing the M1 processor and how good it is for developers. Maybe it's not good, I don't know. We'll find out today. All right, so here is the project that we're working on. Basically, it's a TypeScript file, and what we're gonna do is time it. So we're gonna time the execution doing a TypeScript compilation over and over and over again. Very simple concept. Package.json file has three scripts in it. Build, which is the one I'm going to actually run. This is the script that's going to build our TypeScript using the TSC command. Then it's gonna call npm run execute. So it's gonna execute another npm script, which is this one right here. It's going to run that compiled JavaScript, just execute it, which is pretty simple. So we'll take a look at what that does in a second. After all that, it's going to run the post build command automatically because, well, when you execute an NPM script, it looks for anything that's called with the same name, but it also has a pre or a post and it automatically executes that either before or after. So this one's gonna execute after and it's gonna remove whatever we built in the previous step and it's going to recursively run and build again. So how do we exit this loop, this infinite loop? Well, we have this um, little flag right here called count. We start at zero and I'm gonna increment the count by one. And whenever we, we reach a certain number, or in this case, exceed a certain number, I just throw an exception or an error and that will kick us out of that loop. So what does this do? It's going to call this function do work. It's gonna log doing work to the console, which in itself takes a little bit of time to do, especially if you're doing it a lot and over and over again, that's gonna add up. So we're doing a number of things here that are probably pretty typical that a developer would do. Logging things to the console, building a TypeScript compilation, that takes some time to do. File IO, like removing and deleting files and creating new files. And also reading and writing to files. So here is an example of what we're gonna be doing. Increment count is going to be this function right here. We're going to get datum from this file it's gonna read a file using node. Read file sync with a file name. It's going to parse the contents of that file, which is just a JSON object. And then it's going to read a couple of properties on that JSON object. One is the count, which is gonna increment. Then it's gonna keep track of the start time and how long the execution of the entire process took place. So it's going to finally write back to that same file, the new data, which is gonna include the new count, which is updated, the start time, which is the original start time, and then finally the new runtime, which is the updated runtime, or how long this has been running since the beginning of our execution. All right, so that basically sums it up. I'm gonna give you just a sample of what we're gonna be running here. So I'm gonna do an npm install to get all the packages installed, which includes TypeScript. Let's take a look at that. Yep, we have TypeScript, we also have types, node so we can get that file system object right at the top and um, let's go ahead and execute this script instead of a hundred times i'm going to do this only 10 times so it's nice and quick i'm going to run npm run build and this will generate a brand new file called my file right here, which with every iteration is going to resave to itself, updating the count. As you can see here, the start time doesn't get updated, but the runtime does get updated. All right, so by the end of it, 
We exit the program because we throw the exception once count is greater than 10. And the total runtime is 29 seconds. These are milliseconds, so we just divide it by 1,000. So about 29 seconds. All right, here we are on the two machines. My MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM, Intel Core i9, and MacBook Air with the new M1 chip, 16 gigabytes of RAM. I've got the code here on both of these, and the project is open in Visual Studio Code, and I'm gonna kick things off. Now, before I do that, I wanna set the number of iterations pretty high so that we see over a long period of time how this performs. So let's head over here to the MacBook Pro, and right now, I'm gonna set the number of iterations. Uh, let's see, count equals more than 100. How many times do I want this repeated? Well, it takes about three to four seconds to do one installation, to do one run, TypeScript compilation, and then blowing everything away and doing it again. So I'm gonna start off nice and easy. I'm gonna do this for 100 iterations. The way it is, the way I wrote it. Okay, so here it is on the MacBook Air. We've got the exact same project, 100 iterations. I'm gonna press Control Backtick to open up the terminal and Control Backtick here. I'll do npm install and now npm build. And same thing here, npm build. And it doesn't matter if I press them at the same time because we'll see how long it takes in that file that's generated, but still it's fun. That's why I do it, because it's really just fun pressing these at the same time, isn't it? And seeing which one finishes first. One, two, three, go. <laughs> uh, sometimes there's so many things to turn on when I'm recording these that I forget to actually run the thing properly npm run build npm run build go all right they're off to the races let's see how long this takes on each machine a few moments later okay i'm back interesting results here not what I expected. And that's what makes this a lot of fun, right? Because I get to try this and you get to see me try this. And uh, sometimes things don't go as expected. So let's take a look at the results. And it looks like the MacBook Pro with the Core i9 processor finished first. I am gonna run this again to make sure that was not a fluke, but it finished first by a lot, which is surprising to me. After the amazing performance that I've seen so far, and you've seen so far on this channel with the new M1 machines. So the result is the runtime was 275 seconds on the MacBook Pro with the Core i9 chip, 389 seconds about there on the M1. So I'm gonna run this again. We've got these numbers so far. I'm gonna run it again to make sure that this is not a fluke. All right, so in order to do that, I'm gonna blow away my file. Let's delete that. Yep, let's delete that here. All right. And I'm gonna delete the dist folder as well because that's gonna be built again anyway. Delete. Uh, let's just do a clean slate and go. Okay, let's see what happens this time. I'll see you back when this is done. All right, folks, I have some progress to report. The MacBook Pro is done already. We're still waiting on the MacBook Air with the M1 chip to finish this process. I don't know if it's really required for me to run this for more than 100 iterations because we saw that 100 iterations, the MacBook Pro won two times in a row. Why would we have any difference with, I don't know, 500 or 1,000 iterations? Maybe I should do it anyway. So this is a really interesting test because it's different than the other ones we've done so far. This test does run the node process, but it does it in short little bursts, little increments. Pretty different than what we've seen so far where we've seen extended build times on both of these machines. And apparently in this type of scenario where you have short little bursts, the Intel chip is actually better. Okay, we've got uh, something finishing up here on the MacBook Air. Let's take a look at the final numbers here for this run. So on the MacBook Pro, let's open up my file and the final runtime was about the same, about 278 seconds. This one, also about the same, 389 seconds. So that was 101 iterations. Folks, I think we have a clear winner on this one, but let's do one more test just to make sure. I'm gonna increase the number of iterations to, let's make it a thousand because it's time for me to go get lunch. What, you thought I was gonna sit here while this thing ran for a half an hour? Come on, a thousand iterations. I'm gonna delete my file, 
I'm going to delete the dist folder. Ready? Let's do this. And I'll see you after lunch. Okay, I'm back from lunch and looks like we have a winner again. The MacBook Pro with the Intel chip is already done with this task. And if we check to see how long it took, this task took that long. That's the runtime right there in milliseconds, which equals about 51 minutes. This one is still running. I am gonna show you how long this eventually takes. However, there is one more thing I wanted to show you, and I was gonna save this as a surprise for another video, but this is too important not to share with you right now. I have here, Dell XPS 13, a brand new laptop. It's actually pretty impressive. It's a beauty. It feels really solid. It's a bit smaller than the MacBook Air, but it's just as thin. And I ran the exact same test on it. Well, not the second test, but the first one where I had 100 iterations. And guess what? Here is the result. As you can see, the Dell with the Windows operating system ran this in less time than both the MacBook Pro with the Intel chip Core i9 and the M1. And this Dell is powered by Core i7 processor, 11th generation. So this is the latest and greatest Intel processor, i7, not even the i9, and it is fast, at least in this test. So definitely more to come with this machine, more testing needs to happen. And I'm gonna compare some other projects that are node based and that are Android based, not Xcode based, clearly. We're gonna throw this into the mix and see how this does in future videos. So for now, the Dell is actually the winner. I know, surprised, but that's what I'm here for. I'm here to show you options for developers that are looking for a new machine. Okay, folks, this is wrapping up right now. The MacBook Air is just on its final thing and it's done. Okay, we are done. It's actually been a long time, a lot longer than I expected. Let's take a look at the results. So um, just to review, MacBook Pro finished at about 51 minutes and MacBook Air with the M1 chip finished in 5 million 28,057 divided by 60,000, 83 minutes. That's a long time. I could have eaten two lunches at this point. So this kind of puts a damper on all my tests so far with the M1. It performed really poorly in this test and I am just confused. So M1 so far has been a really good machine, but this kind of test really showed where it does have some issues, specifically this kind of build over and over again process. And this is actually typical of what we do, isn't it? As developers, we work on a project throughout the day and we have maybe a, some kind of watch going on that keeps rebuilding the project, recompiling our TypeScript code if that's what we're using. So this is pretty typical. Of course, there's gonna be more testing going on. And if you do have any comments or questions about this particular test, let me know in the comments below. If you do have a suggestion for another test, also let me know. There's one more thing I wanna check, and that's the activity monitor and the energy tab. So <laughs> this is where the M1 actually still wins. And this is the amount of battery that's left. Remaining charge on the MacBook Pro is 28%. It says there's four hours and 56 minutes left on it, but I've never seen it last even that long. The M1 has 73% left with over eight hours, eight and a half hours of battery time left. So there you go, folks. Hopefully this was informative or entertaining. And if it was, I'd appreciate a thumbs up so other people can also find this information on YouTube. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please do consider subscribing to the channel to get more information like this. I'm doing some M1 testing and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.